You guys are like, you guys are like six. BFFs. <laughs> I was going to get t-shirts made for you for Christmas. Oh, sorry. T-shirts? Yeah. All right, we're cutting it into Yes. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's training time. Um, so we are, we are live on the air. We are good. Okay. I'm sorry. So, uh, <laughs> that was really inappropriate then. <laughs> So Bill wants to advertise that he's on the cover of the main town. <laughs> Are you being serious? Is he serious? Yes, sir. Right there. Cool. There's one at your so place. <laughs> so Wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Okay. So as, she's checking, the as she's checking that out, uh, we do need to get started. <laughs> so uh, tonight's uh, first workshop is on stormwater drainage. And I want to turn it over to Tom and to the town engineer. Certainly. Um, I think all of you may recall, or most of you, uh, we are working under a federal permit for stormwater management, the so-called MS4 Four. Four permit. Uh, a component of that is quite elaborate, but one of the components is electric official training. It was, a, mm. a, I think, an hour-long presentation about an hour uh, a year ago, and uh, we are approaching the need to do that again. In fact, we're very close to the deadline to get that done, so I appreciate your time and attention tonight. We have done it every year. And Angela Blanchett is here to provide you an update for electric officials training. So she condensed it at 15 minutes because we're fast learners. Yeah, right? well, you right, need yeah. And I might talk really, really and fast. And she's a fast presenter. <laughs> 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 well, I, I do want to thank you guys because I know you have a lot of uh, more pressing, probably, things to deal with. Um, but this is important in the long term for a permit requirement. So I know I have limited time, so I'm going to jump right in. <laughs> Um, it starts with the Clean Water Act, and this is the federal act that um, regulates all discharges to any water body across the country, and that's what our permit is under. And the EPA and DEP, in this case, in the state of Maine, um, administers this permit. And really it's broken out into, under the Clean Water Act, two um, avenues. There's sewer and there's stormwater. And in Scarborough, we obviously have the Scarborough Sanitary District, which um, regulates, they permit, they license, they test, monitor everything that discharges from that treatment plant. And so there is a whole list of regulations they have, um, which is pretty stringent. And so I would say equal to that on the other side is the stormwater um, system, which the town has full responsibility of administering that part of it. And um, as Tom mentioned, we call it an MS4, which just stands for the municipal and the four S's are the separate storm sewer system. That's where we come up with, it's just saying that 100 times. It's an MS4. And really that is the, the system. It's here I'm showing it as a catch basin connecting into closed pipes, but it's also a lot in Scarborough is our ditches that roadside ditches that discharge to the marsh or a stream or a brook. Um, and that is all covered under that. So Scarborough was one of 30 regulated communities in the state of Maine, and you can see here, it obviously is gravitates towards the urban areas, the more developed areas. Um, those are the regulated communities that EPA has, has listed out as needs to follow under these, this permit. Um, we also have to identify our priorities, and those watersheds in Scarborough are Red Brook and Phillips Brook, which we have a watershed management plan that we're working on for Red Brook, and we're in the uh, process right now of creating a Phillips Brook watershed management plan. And this, uh, a couple things to note on this would be that the permit is a five-year cycle. So our next cycle will be coming up in 2018, which means Every permit cycle is additional requirements, which means additional costs, additional staff time, um, lots of other things. So I think next year it'll be probably a bigger conversation to have with council because we'll have know exactly what those requirements are for the new permit, which might be a heightened stormwater program. Um, I'm going to go through, basically there's six what we call minimum control measures. So basically the permit is separated into six segments. And I have to annually report on each of these items to DEP. Tonight um, I'll be submitting the agenda and some notes and my presentation as part of the annual report that goes up to DEP to, as part of the first minimum control measure, which is public education and outreach. 
Um, as I said, this is part of it. There's also um, some adult education classes that are held through um, Scarborough for yardscaping. We also do a biannual stormwater conference, which is for municipal um, officials and staff, as well as education for designers, engineers that do development work in town. The next one is uh, public participation. And one of the big things that we do is we organize um, with a total of 14 communities in the greater Portland area, from Freeport to Biddeford. Uh, we work on requirements one and two, and urban runoff is a 5K that we do. It's held in Portland. And last year, I'm very proud to say that the town of Scarborough won the largest municipal team award. <laughs> and this is the only members that hung around for the award ceremony, <laughs> but it was a larger team. <laughs> and um, so pretty proud of that. And it's basically about getting people out, getting people aware of what we do. You'll see stenciling around catch basins around town. That's also part of getting people to help and participate <laughs> and getting the public aware of what's going on. <coughs> The illicit discharge detection and elimination is really the meat of what we do um, for this permit. It's really finding the issues with our system. And so we are required to go out annually. We inspect every pipe outfall and ditch outfall. And what we're looking for is things like on the right, where you have soapy water coming out of a storm drain system, <coughs> And we can trace that back and find that, in fact, that was a washing machine that was connected illegally to a stormwater system. Hmm. So those are the type of things that a lot of people not knowing that, that they're two separate systems. A lot of people think what goes in the catch basin is going to the treatment plant. And in fact, it's not. It's going to a lot of our natural resources. So it's, that's why the stenciling is important and really just education so people know. On the left picture is actually a picture I took. Um, this is in the Redbrook watershed where an oil truck had spilled. Um, and this is about a year ago, and the uh, public works and fire department did a great response. Um, the coordination was perfect, spot on. That's what all the training actually came together. And what could have been a bigger newsworthy incident was a pretty minor, we contained it, clean, got a clean harbor in there, cleaned it up, and, and that's exactly what we should be doing. The next is uh, requirement four is about construction site runoff. This is um, something after the planning board approves projects um, and construction starts. They start with a pre-construction meeting with myself and staff and planning, uh, senior planner and some other um, staff members, and we go over, here's what we're expecting on the site. And one of the things that we expect is that everything stays in a, on their site. So you can see here, there's different uh, measures they have to implement, and um, sometimes, obviously, a heavy rain comes in. What was good yesterday is not good tomorrow, and so it has to be a continuous um, process to keep those in, in good working order. So, and those again are, th are inspections that we summarize and I do include, have to uh, report back to DEP. Five is um, after construction, which talks about um, when a development comes through, they are required by ordinance to do some water quality treatment, depending on the size and thresholds they trigger. Uh, Town of Scarborough, under the permit, is also required to encourage developers to use some low impact development techniques. So there's other things that we meet with developers early to talk about that in their design. Um, but we also kind of try to work with them on what fits best for their site. And there are a lot of opportunities out there, so it's, it's a collaborative effort most of the time. And uh, once the site is done and inspected, um, they, if they have a, a measure in place to treat stormwater, they're required under this permit to report to uh, the town on making sure that the system is functioning. So they have to annually inspect it and show us the log. And again, that is something that I have to uh, report back to DEP. And if I don't 
get all of them. <laughs> and it is a, a pretty much a tracking nightmare to try to make sure I get everybody <laughs> in. Um, and they want to know why, and there's a lot of follow-up, and there's a lot of, um, I think, outreach on my part to make sure developers know, because as some people um, will will buy a new property if it's just been finished, or they didn't weren't in the beginning of the process, and now they're at the end and didn't know what was going on. So there's a lot of I'm finding education and trying to make sure people know what they're they're getting into. So um, that's another thing that it, it takes you know time, and I think over time, hopefully everyone gets in that rhythm of the annual inspection. The last one is um, for MCM six which is good housekeeping and pollution prevention. And I, I, I spend my Wednesdays at Public Works and I had to throw in, this is Dickie Collins um, mm -hmm. doing a catch basin cleaning inspection, mm -hmm. I called it. But this is not typical. <laughs> He's a retirement party tomorrow, so He's I had to throw it in. <laughs> um, really part of this is uh, the fact that Public Works, you'll see out there street sweeping, they do have to clean out the catch basins. Everything that gets dumped into catch basins is not only just trash, but really sand and salt from the road. It gets all washed, as I said, down through the catch basin and out um, into different natural resources. So it's really important that we stay on cleaning out those pipes in the structures. <coughs> Other part of this um, requirement is uh, showing the fuel island because a lot of it is about spill control. And it's really about the town um, being the role model and showing, you know, we have these measures in place and we're doing what we should be doing. And DEP wants to start with us where they have more control and eventually hopefully spill that out beyond. So as I mentioned, um, require, new requirements are coming. There's, I'm just going to touch um, two big ones that um, make me a little nervous. <laughs> One is um, at those outfalls, part of the Massachusetts permit is um, collecting samples at those outfalls and testing, which comes with uh, dollars. And we have a lot of outfalls, so and that can range into the thousands depending on what we're testing for. So that is something that we are, as a um, stakeholder group, um, I attend uh, meetings up in Augusta working with DEP on the language of the next permit, but it's really crucial to have a voice in that, show what we are capable of doing and what we're doing now, which I think is getting to the heart of it, is finding those illicit discharges. And so if we can show that we're doing what we should be doing, then perhaps further testing isn't necessary. The other big one um, that is in I believe the Massachusetts or New Hampshire permit is um, more tracking on the impervious cover. So once a watershed reaches 10% 10, uh, 10 um, of impervious cover, it starts affecting and stressing the, the water body. Start, you'll start seeing it affects the fish and the bugs in the streams. So they really want to get a handle on the impervious cover, which um, again, starting with the municipalities and saying, annually doing projects to reduce what our footprint is. So that could mean parking lots, it could be roadways, such as we're talking about the Route 1 Islands and removing impervious cover through that. But it's really a huge commitment to say we're going to put up dollars every year to start working on that. Um, so those are the, the couple of big ones that I see coming. And so my exactly six o'clock. <laughs> so I just wanted to say one last thing is, if you have any questions, I love to talk about this. This is what I enjoy most about my job. But um, it is obviously not working in a bubble, as I mentioned, public works and fire department, but really it touches um, the code enforcement and planning, community services, the school department, and even the police department, because I want them to be able to reach out to me and say, a car accident, that's an illicit discharge. Um, any of these uh, mowing at the field, any kind of fertilizer, different things using community services, which I know that's what we need to communicate and we work together through this permit. So it's really a collaborative effort. And I'm just the one that reports back to DEP. So <laughs> it kind of gets funneled, that's all. I just have one super quick question. Um, do like 
just real estate agents and people like that are in that business, is this part of their testing is to have to know any of this? No. No. Okay. Nope. So it really falls on each municipality to make sure that Right, if someone has a stormwater facility on their site mm -hmm. and, and someone buys that, um, the agreement for reporting is mm -hmm. actually a recorded document. So okay. if you did a search, it would come up as part of that property. So I would say if someone did their due diligence and went and did their research before they buy, they should be seeing that, and okay. there is that, that agreement that says they need to annually report to the town. Okay. Was, there are some conversations. Uh, commercial. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, yep. but more in our commercial division, they would have those conversations and training offered. Okay. Could you describe a little bit about uh, finding out if private septic systems are, are leaking or not adequate, or mm -hmm. whether, because that's something that I think Right. We're always concerned people live, live near water, the rivers and the ocean. Right. So right now in, in our existing permit, we're required to do what they call a windshield survey because I don't have rights to go on private property. So what I'm required to do, we prioritize Red Brook and Phillips Brook. And fortunately, I'm doing a lot of work in Phillips Brook, so I'm not only going on the front of the houses, I'm kind of going up through the stream. So I have the advantage to be able to see where, you can see where the septic systems are. And really, the only way to inspect a septic system is see where it's failing, if you see it leaching out of, um, into a ditch or out of the bank. And so I, um, we just finished Red Brook, we did Phillips Brook, those that are at risk, that could be at risk for impacting the stream. Um, within a certain distance kind of thing and um, that are older than 25 years and those are the, the properties that we kind of circle around um, but and we again those get reported up to DEP so they are seeing anything we see. Could you remind me how we got on the list to say that we're subject to MS4? Is it because we have urban impaired streams or is it just because of location and size? Um, it, it is not, just because, um, I can give an example, Gorham, I believe, does not have an urban impaired stream, but they are an MS4. And it's um, EPA has, and DEP has worked up the list about where the development is. And so it's really about the cluster of development and how much impervious area and commercial development you have. And I think just because our vicinity with Portland loops us into that. So if there's a uh, private property that's septic's failing or something like that and we see discharge or something like that, does the town get fined for that or does that individual property owner have to be responsible for that? Um, that, I think, is a little gray. Um, I think if code enforcement, that would be a, a public safety issue that would have to do go through notice of violation. As long as we're doing our process, mm -hmm. I think it would cover us. I think if we ignored it, then we would be at fault. But I, I think as long as we're going through the process and give people the timeline and here's the steps to take, I think it's, uh, it's how it's typically done. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Angela. Thanks. So we passed. <laughs> we did. Do we get a button? <laughs> You want to take just two minutes to get rid of Yes, let's put you back down on the table. Are we staying here? Yeah, I think right here. Yep. 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 Camera might still be rolling. Be mindful.
so welcome. <laughs> Couple of gentlemen, are you ready? Just for the record, we do have all of the members of the town, town council here as well as the town manager. Tonight's workshop is on the budget um, and the conversation um, that uh, we need to have regarding um, the current level of funding um, for the town as well as uh, moving this forward so that we can um, have a second referendum question. On a high level overview, I did issue a, a, a memo to everyone on the council about tonight's process. I didn't hear any feedback suggesting that we should uh, maybe have something different. So just for the public's uh, kind of uh, uh, information to understand what we're going to do, I've asked uh, both the superintendent and the manager to provide us with a presentation of their recommendations to bring the public up to speed. At the last meeting, we did decide, um, and at least at first reading, that we asked the managers to come back with a adjustment that would reduce the overall tax rate to 3% or less, which is about a $307,000 adjustment. Uh, with that being proportionally um, divided or apportioned between the school department and the town. And so um, they're going to give their um, uh, presentation. And then uh, really I'm going to open it up to the council for comments and recommendations on theirs. I do want to suggest that this is just an initial conversation. We normally do have public comment during our workshops at the end. However, for legal purposes, um, we are not having those because we are actually going to formally open up a um, special meeting and it's a public hearing in which public comment can be shared at that time because we are required uh, by charter and ordinance to have that uh, separated and it was the desire of the council to separate all three actions into individual dates. So for legal purposes, um, we're, we will move immediately into the regular meeting um, of the town council to have public comment. And that is the only item that we have this evening um, on, the, on that agenda. That will start at 7 o'clock. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, the manager and the superintendent. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start. I don't have any uh, prepared that I can show, uh, show up there, but I think it's fairly straightforward, and I think I can uh, walk you, talk you through it, if you will. Uh, when presented with the task uh, of further reduction of the municipal budget by 71000 And I should preface this by saying I think the approach that the council is considering is the right one, and perhaps there will be some conversation around that. I'm pleased to provide my comments further in that regard, but um, you know, I didn't relish this opportunity, but I, I understand um, the bigger picture and the value in, in continuing the same approach. So when pre presented with this challenge, if you will, um, I wanted to really meet two main objectives for myself. Um, one was I really didn't want to involve my department heads if I, if I could help it. Frankly, I've gone back with them twice through this process and asked them to reduce budgets by some proportional share. And so that was my goal going into this. And more importantly, really to do no harm if I could. And that uh, kind of takes two different angles. One is harm from an operation or, operation or service level point of view. Uh, and also to avoid controversy, frankly. And so uh, with that in mind, uh, I first looked at uh, and really scrutinized some of the vacant positions, particularly in the senior staff that I have. And the, um, that scrutiny or analysis yielded about $51,000 in savings. And I don't see this being terribly impactful. It really um, mirrors what I expect will happen in terms of when staff will be actually coming on board and we'll be paying them and so on and so forth. Um, and so I offer uh, a series of, of proposed adjustments. One would be for the planning director salary. Um, I think there's about 22300 that can be had there between salary and benefit um, savings. In the human resources area, um, Jacqueline Mandrake, the current director, her last day is next week, but there'll be six or eight weeks before I get someone on board. I'm already well underway, but I fully expect to be hiring a seasoned professional that's working somewhere else that will need to give adequate notice. So uh, there are certain savings that we can expect, again, through salary and benefits. Uh, and then for public works, as was mentioned earlier, we have a longtime deputy director that's retiring uh, this week, uh, Friday, as a matter of fact. 
and uh, we'll be looking to bring someone on for September 1. That's always been our plan, and so we've really scrutinized those numbers a bit further. Uh, the final one is some uh, somewhat unexpected savings in a benefit adjustment line. Uh, there's a line in my budget, the executive budget, uh, where increases and in contractual obligations kind of undefined and unknown at the time of the budget. Um, and we scrutinized that and, and realized uh, about $8,000 savings. So the combination of those four areas yields uh, about $51,000. And then to close the final gap, I suggest that we defer um, a capital project that was to be appropriated. It was to provide carpet replacement for the lower level. Uh, the carpet uh, in that area is as old as the building and it's showing its, its age. Um, that's something we can certainly work around and I expect we'll be coming back to you in future years. But again, I don't see that as to be a tremendous hardship on staff. I think that's something we can certainly defer to the future and uh, take those conversations up at that point. So I present you a, a proposal. Um, should you accept it uh, or a variation of it, um, these should be offered by formal amendment at your second reading. Um, you're not in a position to take action tonight, so ideally you would come to some consensus of the package of adjustments that you'd entertain, and I'd be pleased to prepare that amendment uh, to be offered at second reading. Um, and it's worth noting, I, I do applaud the council juggling its personal schedule to meet this evening to be able to identify these cuts uh, at the end of the workshop, really for benefit of the public, so they appreciate where it's coming from. Uh, and again, I'm, I hope at least the ones I've offered up are met with some uh, receptivity and appreciate that there's little or no harm that will be felt by these. So I'm pleased to answer questions if you have them, Mr. Chairman. Council of Sinclair. <clears throat> My only concern with this is the planning department. Um, I just feel like, you know, our planning department is probably one of our strongest um, and needed departments to keep this town mm -hmm. creating revenue. Um, and while I appreciate the work that Karen Martin and Jay and everyone have stepped up to do, it concerns me that we don't have that vacancy filled and that we're going to potentially postpone that even longer. No, actually, I, that's the position that's further along. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll be, I'm very close to making an announcement in that regard, so um, there'll be no further delays. I could not agree with you more. That's a position I don't think this community can live without. Yeah. Uh, Karen and all the staff at rallied have done a tremendous job in the meantime, but the sooner we get back to full strength, the better. So do you have any time frame on that? Uh, Ballpark? By the end of the week, I'll be announcing, yes. <laughs> and then they probably have to give their notice. Or not. Or not. Let's not say that. Okay, never mind. Strike that question. Um, that's really the only concern that I have with with that entire list. I, I appreciate you raising it. I really don't see it as a concern. Uh, okay, because good. we're really able to move as quickly as we possibly could. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I guess just, just kind of a follow up. So, did I hear you say, just make sure I heard it, that these savings are really just, it's more of just a function of where you are in the hiring process. It's right. not really that you're delaying no. implementation or anything. It's just the timing of when people have left and From what you budgeted and where we find ourselves. So right. At the time of budget one, we don't anticipate these vacancies. Yeah. So they right. happen yeah. unexpectedly, frankly, right. for a number of very good and valid reasons. Uh, but it matters who you hire and you know what's been budgeted to satisfy the current needs. Uh, okay. So we've really scrutinized those to identify these savings. And again, I don't see them as delaying anything. I'm not on any different timeline. It's just the practical realities of where we're going to end up. Good. These monies would actually be realized probably in your um, fund balance right. um, yep. otherwise. Yep. Thank other, you. other questions? Um, even though it was not a direct charge because of the way that the amendment was, did you contemplate any adjustments or recasting of any revenue forecast? I know that you know we talked uh, several times over and over, particularly about excise um, being kind of that bucket that w it's always hard to predict. Did you look at any of the other revenue sources? We looked at, um, well, I should say that was one of my other objectives, is to come forward with appropriation proposals as opposed to uh, a shared approach or all revenue. Uh, excise continues to outperform. Uh, frankly, I think there may be a little more money there. Uh, I'm always a bit concerned. Uh, we continue to perform extremely well. 
Um, and I guess I didn't offer that up, and, and I really don't recommend you go there, really because we've all acknowledged that we're going to need as much fund, fund balance uh, in FY19 as possible. And so to the extent that we are, uh, we realize a, a bit more excise than we are currently budgeted, we'll benefit from that, and frankly, we'll need it when the time comes. So uh, if you really were stretched and wanted to go there, you could probably squeeze a bit more, but I suggest that you keep it where it is. We've been pretty aggressive already. And we have been for the last few years. Yeah. So, and we raise budget every year, so I mean, uh, you, you should feel comforted in that. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. How's it going? What does this bring the uh, year over year spending increase to for the municipal budget? Yeah, I've taken the liberty of actually modeling it. Uh, on the back, you'll see the uh, overly complicated tax rate computation page. But to answer your question, that puts municipal spend spending at gross spending at 2.04% over last year. Yeah, it's the top number on the yep. right hand side right column. And net is point oh three. Yes, when you factor in the valuation increase, uh, we actually are um, look very good in that regard. I'm sorry, uh, net, yes, just That's slightly flat. point oh three. Yeah. Uh, when flat. you when you factor in valuation, our impact right. on the tax rate is actually goes negative. Negative. Okay. Any other Thank questions? For Tom? It's a great job, Tom. Yeah, great yep. suggestion. Well, Thank you. Pleased to help. Um, before we get into recommendations we've got at the municipal, I think it would be fair to hear from the superintendent from an overview. Um, so I'd like to about if she can provide an overview. I think it's going to be somewhat of a challenge because the school board hasn't met, I don't believe, yet. Mm -hmm. best there, so. I didn't quite hear your specific question. Uh, with the, uh, okay. Just uh, if you can uh, describe to us what, what the impact of the adjustments and, um, and where some of those areas might be that you're focusing in on so we can understand the true impact. So as, as you mentioned, I have not had the chance to meet with the school board to share details of where the reductions will be, but we're fully prepared to meet the goal of 236. And so I believe, um, much like the town manager has done, we have new information that we didn't have time at the time of the original budget proposal. Um, so that has allowed us to make some increases in areas such as like the copier replacement and service plan bid. Um, and then also some staffing adjustments that we were able to look at. So um, we feel confident that it'll have uh, a minimal impact on our students based on the decisions that we're making, intentionally so. Um, really trying to avoid those areas of high emotion um, because we don't think that that's healthy in terms of the long-term goal of, our, of getting our community um, all on the same page in terms of one town, one budget but um, we'll be able to meet the, the 236. And my plan is to um, just be able to go over the details with the school board because we do have a few choices to make yes. and where exactly those funds come from, but I have a plan A, B, and C <laughs> prepared. Yes. That makes sense. So um, I, I don't, not that we have obviously have any control over what the decisions are, but um, it would be a, a nice for me to hear um, what the, what the impact is going to be, where areas you're looking at for reduction, not necessarily to impact those or to influence those, but to understand what that reduction really means. So when would that be available before second reading or at second reading? So our, we have a special meeting scheduled for right after second reading. Okay. And again, I understand your intent, and I know that it's not to micromanage where those decisions are made. It's just the timeline seems yeah. a little off in um, being able to really follow the process with the school board so that they have the voice that they are um, afforded in the process. Okay. No, I understand that. I just it, Sometimes it helps if we have an understanding of the perspective on the other side, if we have challenges with the numbers. Right. So do you have a date for the uh, Board of Education meeting at which you'll confer with them on the changes? Um, we're planning to meet right after the second reading meeting on July, July 5th. So on July Right after, 5th. immediately same following. Yep. Same evening. Same evening. Yep. Okay. We figured if we could get folks out for one meeting, we should have them both on Great. the same night. 
and that will allow for our community to have um, the most clarity when the early voting, absentee voting, starts on July 6th. Yeah. So that was the plan. Any other questions for the superintendent? Thank you very much. So um, with that, what we discussed was now opening it up to council comments and council recommendations for consideration and uh, you know, sharing maybe um, if there are other areas that we are focusing in on, on as individuals and what those recommendations might be. Um, I, I you know, will share from myself, I do plan on proposing one amendment. That amendment is really focused on what I call the investment policy within this budget and that has to deal with the um, any educational funding that we receive, I think that depending upon the amount, um, it shouldn't just be all or nothing going into the reserve fund. There should probably be some balance depending on the value because it could either be too little, which what is being currently recommended is fine if you put it all into the reserve fund. If it's 300000 just put it in the reserve fund. But if it's 2 or $3 million, I think that that's a different strategy. Um, that should be looked at and whether it's a 50-50 split or whatever it might be, I'm open to, you know, the discussion. I just think that that's the only part that I'm looking at as far as recommending a change. So can I ask you a question about yeah. that? Uh, if, if the number were uh, above a million dollars, which is a large, obviously a large yeah. amount, you're thinking that at some point in that, whether it's 700, 800, 800 right. a million, yeah. somewhere along the line, uh, rather than having all the money go into fund balance, some of it would go to uh, this year's Correct. tax relief. Correct. And, and, you know, it's a guessing game because we have no idea what the state is going to do. I mean, they're talking about $122 million being put into the formula. That would provide us with a fairly sizable um, dollar value, I believe. And I think that... Um, putting $3 million, if that's what we get into a reserve fund, um, isn't the best approach. So we can have that conversation like when we you know, open that up. But You'll offer that as a formal amendment yes. next week? Okay. Yeah. I, so I guess, I, I mean, I guess I'll start. Um, I, I, we've got a couple op options the way I see it. We can accept staff's recommendations, which we've, which we've done in the past. Um, I think they're well thought out. I think the rationale makes sense to me. Um, um, you know, we, could, we can reopen what we looked at on finance before, which was a whole cadre of, dare I say, controversial things. Um, but those were on the table before. Uh, they can come back to the table again. Or we can look at something completely new or some, something completely different that we haven't thought of. Um, and I think each one of them has benefits, pros, and cons. Um, I think the benefit of sticking with staff's recommendation are they're, they're well thought out, they've already been adjusted, they're, the implementation I think will be fairly easy, if that's even the, the best word for it, but they'll be relatively simple to implement. Um, if we go back to the original ones that we looked at in finance, I think we run the risk of alienating certain areas of town, which uh, at this point, I think it's important for us all to kind of get on board, and I'd hate to give people excuses outside of the school budget to not vote for something. Um, but those were on the table before, and, they, and I think, you know, we, we did debate them and we did discuss them, so there's a little bit of background there to talk about the pros and cons of doing that, if we want to reopen that. Um, and I, I think coming with a new idea or a new approach now at this point in the game, I think, is a little difficult because of the... You know, as we talked about in, in the first go around, the complexity of trying to balance where the funds come from and where they go, as soon as we impact one area, there's a possible negative impact somewhere else. So I think, you know, not that we shouldn't discuss that if there are other ideas, but I think it becomes very complicated and complex if we start pulling, let's say, like we said before, from paving, or if there's something else that we've got to look at. Now we've got to look at the impact through the, the rest of the budget and how that r might ripple through. So, um, you know, because of that, um, I, I would be comfortable supporting staff's recommendations as the best option of no good ones, <laughs> if that's possible, so. Other comments? Um, I'm, full disclosure, struggling to even be here right now, I'm running a little bit of a fever, and um, anyway, so I did share some ideas that I had. Um, with Bill and Tom and 
few others I've talked with. Um, so I'm not gonna, and I don't want to talk a lot because I don't, a, I don't want to share my germs, and uh, yeah, I don't, I, I kind of agree with Kumpak Yaz. I don't know that going into all of those pieces are necessary, but Tom Smoker, it seems pretty mundane, and we're talking about a very small amount of money. So I don't want to create problems that aren't there. Um, the one piece I will probably want to talk about, um, and I may offer an amendment, I just have it, the head's not in that place where I've gotten that far, is the uh, potentially doing something to get that $6,000 beach cleaning <laughs> put back in. So that would be, out of all the things that were on the table before that we talked about, that would probably be my number one. Um, for me that I would like to see us somehow figure out as long as we if we're going back into the municipal budget is there a way you know and and I might argue that that might even bring some people along and that's ultimately um, my goal I, I still have a concern that I don't know you know we're, we're in a tough spot we don't know that 3% is going to do it or not um, what we'll helps certainly hope it will uh, so anyway um, I'm probably not even making I can't even hear you. Um I would agree with Councillor Foley. I think that um, it's important to, you know, if there are small things, if we're going if we're gonna since we have opened it back up, if there are small things that we can do, um, six thousand dollars to put towards Pine Point seems crazy that we wouldn't try to find that money for them. Um Especially when we know it's needed, um, so I would I would agree with that and fully support that. Um, but I also agree that I don't think getting down into the nitty gritty of it is is really going to be beneficial to any of us. I think the the hope is that you know we we do this and and we went we get a yes at the polls i don't think anybody wants the schools to have to dig any deeper and i know that the municipality can't dig any deeper so um i would hope that this will do it anybody else council donovan council Rowan. yeah I, I don't really have anything uh, to say other than i, I support the cuts that's presented on that's great. Thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. Also, Donovan? Well, <coughs> I do, just to cover the landscape, I support the one town, one budget approach. I think this collaborative approach has drawn the uh, leadership of the schools, which is our largest department, uh, much closer. Uh, and I applaud the Finance Committee for, for what it's done in the School Finance Committee. Um, I think it's important to realize that when you're establishing priorities uh, you and you have a single referendum on the schools, <clears throat> you should not lose sight of the fact that the town needs to make these judgments. We are intertwined. We finally make the, the judgment as to how much money. Uh, and I do support the division of responsibility in this case which seemed to have been a collaborative effort between the superintendent and the town manager mm -hmm. uh, where the school has stepped up. Uh, and I do support the town manager's proposed cuts uh, because I think they are non-controversial. And while I do to revisit things like Pine Point, I certainly was not in favor of seeing that money go because I fully believe that <coughs> it was to address a problem that's a legitimate problem. Uh, uh, opening up issues that were controversial or small, I don't know. Council Hayes? Yeah, and I guess I just kind of echo what's been said and I do, you know, if there's a way that, you know, Fine Point Beach cleaning can be worked back in, that's great. But I, on a completely different note, I think what this does show though is I mean, we're going to meet our budget needs this year, and these are some timing and great work, Tom, on doing this. But I'd just like to say I hope the Finance Committee can spend some time. I think we do need to start thinking about next year and what the numbers look like and start thinking about now things that we may need to do to kind of get us to a different place next year. So I'm, I'm looking ahead to next year and what that might mean and mm -hmm. how do we better prepare for some of the decisions we're going to have to make. Mm -hmm. <coughs> 
Budgeting is pretty soon going to be a year-round project. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 Peter's absolutely right. Next year is going to be another difficult year, mm -hmm. and we need to have strategies in place, and part of it is to have as much fund balances as available to be able to cushion the, the landing as we have less and less uh, state funding for schools. So uh, I would applaud any effort by the Finance Committee to begin that process. Any other comments? With that, then uh, I would uh, I'll prepare a formal amendment. I'll share it with Council Chair, and you can coordinate who may yeah. offer that to at least uh, get it in front of you formally, and you can certainly debate it once again. And further amendments are in order as you wish as well. Um, my offer stands. I certainly am pleased to help anyone prepare an, uh, an amendment just to make sure it's presented in the correct fashion and. Uh, really for the point of making sure it's properly heard, discussed, debated, and voted on. So please reach out to me if you want anything beyond what I've recommended to you, and I'm pleased to help. Great. If there is no other comments, then uh, we're going to close the session, and we're going to reconvene in 20 minutes. Yes. The public hearing is advertised for 7. It would be nice, nice to start early, but you really need to start at right. the point. Great. Great. Thank you.